All right, what's up everybody? This is Eric Barassa, and today I wanna to talk about why the uh, refined Parker flies are better than the pre-refined flies. So what I mean by that is um, the Ken Parker flies, when Ken Parker, who created the Parker guitars, started the company uh, or started releasing these guitars, I think in like 93, um, that was until maybe 2003. I, I might be off a little bit, but it was about that time that uh, he sold the company to either it was Washburn, who is owned by US Music Corp, or he sold it directly to US Music Corp, who happens to own uh, other companies as well. Um, and there's this ongoing debate about how the, the pre-refined Parkers post or pre-2003 are better than the newer ones after the big conglomerate company took them over. Uh, but I'm here today to actually argue the opposite. I think that the newer flies are a lot better than the older flies. So that's not to dis diminish what Ken Parker did. I mean, it's a truly awesome innovation in electric guitars, but what US Music Corp did was they were able to improve upon the the design. And by US Music Corp, I'm, I don't, I guess I shouldn't say US Music Corp, I, I should mean like Parker, the guys who were running Parker after Ken Parker left. Um, so forgive me if I'm wrong about the, the details. So let me stick to what I do know, and that's uh, the, the details of the different differences in the guitars. So the first thing that makes the newer flies better than the older flies uh, would be the pickups, okay? So the original pickups in a Parker Fly were DiMarzio's, like a Tone Zone uh, and, and an Air, I don't know, something like that. Great pickups, but they just don't quite work in the Parker Fly. With the way this uh, light body is and the carbon fiber, it just, it didn't, it didn't work. So they had a second generation of pickups by DiMarzio that was supposedly were a lot better. Uh, and then they switched over to Seymour Duncan's, and I think it's it's a JV and a Jazz or something very similar. So what I've actually done, this is a 95 fly that I'm using. This is not one of the new flies, but what I've done to kind of upgrade it and make it more like the newer flies is I got the Ed Roman modified pickups, which um, I, I think are just Seymour Duncan, uh, JV and Jazz guitars. I had to have this guitar specially uh, routed and drilled into to get these there, and these, these guys are stuck. They're never coming out. I can't adjust the height. I can't do anything. It, it, it required a lot of work um, from my, my guitar tech to be able to do that. Um, so, But they sound a lot better than the original. So that's the first improvement. Uh, the second thing is that the newer flies have a push-pull coil split. So in the, in the original ones, what you've got are you've got humbucker in the bridge. Middle position is the inner single coils of the, the uh, bridge and neck. Sorry, that was really terrible guitar playing. Uh, and it, you know, that single coil sound works a lot better with a kind of a clean quack. And then you've got the neck pickup. And that's that's cool. That's nice to have those sounds. But in the newer flies, what you've got is uh, you've got the bridge humbucker. Then the middle position is actually combining both humbuckers, and the neck position is the neck humbucker. And then in, and when you do the coil tap, um, you which is a push pull, you've got single coil bridge. I think it's the one closest to the bridge. Then you've got uh, combining the two middle single coils. And then neck position is the the neck pickup closest to the neck, uh, the single coil closest to the neck, I believe. And it sounds awesome. And I apologize, I don't I don't have that here to demonstrate today. But it really truly makes it super versatile. You can get that nice kind of strat uh, sound, and and you get three different options rather than just one in the older ones. And I'm actually planning to be able to make that change to the old fly but it's, it's kind of complicated and it's very tricky um, and it's not something I would advise anybody try on their own. I won't be trying it on my own. I'll be paying somebody else to do it but, it, but it is a complicated process. And I think 
In the newer flies, they've simplified it. I think the electronics, they've improved that to where putting that in was, was easier, but I don't know for, for sure. So speaking of the electronics, the other thing that's really nice about the newer flies is you just have the three knobs instead of the four on the old ones. Number one, I think it looks better. And I think the, the way the knobs are designed on the new ones looks better than, than these old ones as well. Uh, and it, it's just, it's simpler. And one of the things that, that is uh, great about that is it just makes uh, maneuvering between the pickups uh, a, little bit, a little bit simpler. And then going from the piezo or the piezo to the blended or to the magnetic pickups only, that, that makes that process simpler. Uh, and then tying that into kind of what, what happens when you plug in a stereo cable versus a mono cable. So for those that don't know, the, the Parker can use a Y cable, which you've got a single input with two outputs and you can direct the acoustic piezo sound or piezo to um, an acoustic amp or a PA and you can direct the magnetic pickups and you can have heavy distortion to a nice, awesome rock and roll amp. And you can actually get both of those sounds going at the same time. And in the old ones here, you, you have to push a button to, to make that shift. But in the new ones, it has what's called a, a smart jack. And so it recognizes whether you plug in a mono cable or a stereo cable and it makes that split for you. And that I think is super cool. Some people might say it limits control, but I don't know what else you would, you know, use, use that for. So just let the smart jack do the work. Uh, I'm a simpleton, it makes my life easy. Uh, okay, so the other thing that I like about the, uh, the newer design is they've added some extra wood here in the headstock. And it, that little bit of extra wood that you can't see here on this older fly matches the body paint, which I think just looks neat, but it serves a very practical purpose, which is I can now hang it up on a guitar hanger. Oh, 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 changing the nine volt battery. All right, so check it out. On the old ones, you gotta unscrew this guy. You can use a pick, uh, a nice thick pick, or you can use a screwdriver, and, it, and it's kind of tedious. In the new ones, there's just a little, you know, like you have on the bottom of like a wah-wah pedal where you just pop it open. Uh, it's so easy on, on the new ones. Well, now you've heard my argument for why I think the new flies are better. Here are a couple of the drawbacks to the new ones that, that I hope might get addressed when they come back in 2017, as rumors have it. And that's the whammy bar. The whammy bar used to be this real thick, heavy um, steel uh, bar, which was awesome. And the weight of it felt great and, and it's really nice. The new ones, it's, it's an aluminum bar, which I'm sure is less expensive for them to make. Uh, and it's fine and it, and it works, but it doesn't have quite the same weight as the old one. And I, I just, I liked that. Maybe some people don't. Um, the, the other drawback is that the flywheel is, is no longer visible. I mean, this is, this is actually not really a drawback. I don't care that much about this because once you get the tension set the way you want it, then you never have to touch it again. So this way I can adjust the tension of the bridge just by turning this wheel. Um, in, in the new ones, you use a little metal bar in the, in the back and uh, move it that way. So it's, it's a little bit more tedious, but again, it's one of those things you do once and then you never have to worry about it again. Uh, one thing that, that I really don't like about the new ones is they, they don't have this switch anymore. So in the old ones, you would have this switch. So this is down only mode, which means my whammy bar just goes down. And if I put it here, it goes into floating mode. So I can do like a Floyd Rose type thing. I can push down, uh, I can pull up on the whammy bar, and I love having that option. Uh, and then if you have to tune the guitar, you just put it back in down only mode, tune it real quick. You don't have to deal with all those weird little screws like on a Floyd Rose. And then, uh, and then you can push it back up and you're in floating mode again. But honestly, once you get this thing set up properly, the floating mode stays in tune so well, um, you don't have to tune it that, that frequently. So that's, that's super cool. But in the new flies, you have to take that same metal bar that you use to adjust the tension of the bridge and you have to stick it in the back and move it to the floating position or move it back down to down only position. That's kind of a pain because I think it's really hard to go through an entire gig or entire show without having to um, 
<laughs> tune your guitar. So to have to bring out this little metal bar in the middle of a show when you want to be floating the whole time, uh, I, I think it's kind of weird and, and inconvenient. So I hope that they return to that switch. I don't know if they, they made that, this is not working anymore. I don't know if they made that change because uh, people were accidentally flipping the switch while they were playing. I'd never had that problem. Okay, and then um, one of the other things is you don't have this sensor light anymore. This this tells you on the old ones uh, when you have about five hours of your nine volt battery life left. And in the new ones, there's no way to know except when the guitar just starts to sound not very good. And then you know it's time to change the battery. So I like that warning because as soon as I see that light come on, I'm like, okay, cool. I can maybe play another gig or two um, but I need to be switching out that battery real soon. And I usually do it just as soon as I see the light. I'm having some problems with hanging this thing around today. Those are the differences um, between the old and the new flies and why I think the, the new flies are a lot better, uh, save a couple of small items. So if, I don't know, you got disagreements with me, I'd, I'd love to hear what you think, but only disagree if you have owned or spent a significant amount of time with both the pre-refined flies and the post-refined flies. Um, I, I'm not interested in, in debating someone who, who is a, a Parker purist who only has dealt with the old ones as well, old is better, you know, because they're nostalgic or whatever. I think people get that way with strats and Les Pauls and, and the Parker is so groundbreaking and so innovative, like to be a, a, a Parker nostalgic, like Parkers are very forward moving guitars, so let, let's keep them moving forward. All right, I'm Eric Barassa, I'll talk to you guys soon.